Hi everyone, hope that you all are doing well. Today in this video, we will be talking about MyBetis framework and a CRUD application implementation on it and when to use it and the advantages of using it over the JPA. But before we jump into the video's context, I would like to request you if you find my videos knowledgeable, please do like, share and comment your queries on the videos and if new to the channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon. Guys, I have enabled membership community for you to have one-to-one -one interaction with me and resolving your issues in live recording session. If you are interested in joining, please do, do hit the join button. So let's first discuss what is MyBetis. So MyBetis is a Java framework that simplifies the interaction with the relational database by using SQL statement in XML or annotation way. It provides mapper interface to map SQL query. What are the advantages of uh, using my better so it uh, it is often uh, preferred for a legacy system and performance critical application where direct sql accesses advantages right so uh, when to use jpa and when to use my better so my better is preferred for complex queries performance tuning and legacy system whereas jpa is ideal for faster development and when less sql management is needed there you can use the jpa so these were the theoretical understandings of uh, what is my betis and what advantages does my betis hold over jpa and what jpa has an advantage of uh, over my betis right so the choices are dependent on you that what you what framework you are using both are orm frameworks right so uh, jpa uh, basically is much more faster than my betis but my betis uh, if you talk about my betis my betis is usually used in uh, legacy systems or maybe the applications that hold a lot of dependency on sql queries on a lot of uh, complex log logics uh, written on the sql query so today what uh, i'll be implementing a crud application on uh, my using my betis framework uh, furthermore, uh, in the next uh, upcoming videos on MyBetis, I'll be telling you that how uh, a complex logic could be built using my MyBetis, and further we'll be implementing further applications on using MyBetis. Right. So today, let's start by implementing a simple CRUD application. Let me create a new project and let's start with the Spring Starter project, or rather Spring Boot with MyBetis CRUD. Right. So we are using Java 21 and again the packages and all are already defined. We are using Java 21. Right. Let's go next. So we are using Spring version 3.3.2. 3 Here what we'll be using, we'll be using the Spring web dependency that is required to run the application. Right. Then we are making a REST application. We'll be testing the application using Postman so we don't require Themely for anything else. We require the MySQL driver as we'll be dealing with the MySQL database right along with that we need my betas dependency right so we need the my betas dependency so my betas dependency is basically replacing this spring data jpa dependency in this project right so let me finish and import the project so my project is imported let's go and let's check the pom.xml first and let's see the dependencies right so there were three dependencies that we added one was of spring web right then it was of my betis and then my sql connector right so these are the three dependencies that we require for this project so now let's uh, make a package let's make a package that is model package i'll be dealing with a very simple example so uh, we are taking a simple model a simple model of a user right so let me declare a simple model of a user So this is my model class. Uh, I require ID. Name. So these are the fields that I'll be storing into the database. Uh, so let me generate the getters and setters. Let me go in source and let me say generate getters and setters and generate. So as uh, we are implementing this application using my betters, so we are not defining this model as at the red entity or the table annotations as that those annotations are being catered when we are using the JPA right when we use the spring JPA dependency right so all those packages are in the JPA uh, way we implement the database in a JPA way but now we are implementing the database in a my betis way right so here what you have to do is one disadvantage could be that when you are uh, implementing uh, application so the tables and all you have to manually create it 
or there is a provision that uh, you keep the procedures and all uh, and then you make a kind of an automation that could uh, uh, create the tables at the time of run right and there are some my betis tools available as well that can automatically create tables but that those are again they, those are external tools right when we use jpa we don't use any external tool and we simply get the tables in our uh, database right so this is one of the uh, adva disadvantages of uh, my betis that you can't create the you have to manually create the table in the database so this is my model class uh, now let me also add uh, some properties as well as i'll be connecting with the mysql database so let me add my mysql these are my properties that we have the url of the database and the username password of the database uh, here you can see that we don't have the uh, uh, any other uh, like uh, property of uh, like uh, the HBM DDL property and all those properties are the those are again read by JPA to create the table automatically at the time of run right so these are the properties that I have added in the application dot properties right so now my application dot property is also read uh, this is my uh, schema that I'll make in the mysql workbench right so I'll make it later on so we have the model class we have the application dot properties now what we have to do is we have to make our uh, mapper right so let's make a mapper class so let me create a mapper package right so let me create a mapper package so here uh, we deal with the mapper mappers to uh, map the queries right map our sql queries as in uh, when we use the jpa we used to write repositories right so we used to extend it with JPA repositories and all those things, but here we'll be writing mapper and in mapper we'll be writing our SQL queries, right? So now we have our, uh, let me create a mapper class also. So let me create a mapper class. Let me say mapper class and let's say it has user mapper, right? So we have the user mapper we don't have to create a class we have to create an interface right so here also we'll be creating an interface and so this is my mapper class here what i have done is uh, we have marked this interface as a mapper right so this is my interface class sorry this is my interface uh, mapper interface user mapper interface so basically uh, mappers here are used to map the sql queries right so as in when we use the jpa uh, we used to make the repositories and in the repositories we used to extend it with jpa repository or crud repository and we used to use the pre, uh, predefined methods right here what you have to do is you have to make a, a mapper a interface mapper and you have to mark it as at the rate mapper right here what we are doing is we are we have written various methods right uh, to get the data by id to get all the data to insert the data to update the data and to delete the data so for each method we have also written the queries right so, uh, you can see that at the rate select and we have written select star from user where id is this right and for selecting all the data we have reused select star from users right and for inserting the data we have used the insert query insert into user name email user uh, email id and name and insert the uh, insert user right so basically this is acting as uh, the save method right so saving the data is into the database then we have the update method so here what we are doing update user set name as name email id as name email id and the id is this so we are passing the id as a primary key right and we are updating the name and the email id on the basis of that again on the delete query we are again using delete from users where id is this. so we will be passing the id and the data gets deleted from the database so these are my mapper queries for the crud right so now what we have to do is we have to make a service class where the service would be interacting with the controller right so let's uh, make a service package first so let me create a service package let me say new package dot service and let me create a new uh, user service as well so let me create a class that is user service user service right so we have user service and this is my user service we have marked this class as at the rate service right we are auto wiring a user mapper the user mapper class that we have made right 
So we auto add the user mapper and using the user mapper we are uh, defining all the method methods right so like it is get user by id so mapper is getting the user by id using the mapper method that we have already defined right then uh, we have defined a method get all users and then mapper is using the get all users method from the mapper class same way for the insertion of the user and same way for the updation of the user right along with the delete Right, so this is uh, the complete CRUD that we have completed in the service class, right? So now we need a, a interface that is, uh, now we need a REST controller to directly interact with the service class and r return the results to us, right? So now let's uh, create another package that is uh, our REST controller package. So let me create a package here, say, right? So now here we have to make a uh, REST controller, right? Here we have to make a controller. So let me say a new class that is a user controller, right? And let so this is my user controller class. I have marked this as REST controller and I'm passing the mapping as users, right? So here what we are doing, we have auto wired the user service object and we are simply performing the CRUD operations, right? So get mapping is being used to get the data by ID get mapping is used to get all the data right and post mapping is used to insert the data so this will act as saving of the data into the database put mapping is used for updation of the users as in the previous video also i have discussed that we'll be using the put and patch uh, instead of post when we are updating the data right so here the two fields are getting updated like name and the email id are getting updated so we uh, we have suggested that uh, we'll go for put mapping and the id is been passed as a primary key and in the deletion also id is passed as a primary key and the deletion has been done so crud we have already performed many a times right so it's just that we have written the queries rather than directly using the jpa way so the main class that that is the highlight is uh, the user mapper class right so this class uh, be needs to be uh, designed very properly when you are writing the queries that should be uh, of more uh, what we can say that uh, very sensibly this class needs to be written as you will be writing the queries here right and one thing more uh, the mapper needs to be mapped with the uh, when the application uh, starts right so in the uh, main application you have to give the mapping you have to map uh, you have to provide the mapper here right so you have to say mapper scan so there is an annotation called as mapper scan and you have to pass the uh, complete package path to that package of mapper right so you can pass you can copy this and you can put it here you can put mapper right so if you see uh, the same is a is my package of a mapper right so this is my package of a mapper right so now uh, my application has been completed we have done with the coding part right so I'll run the application but before that let me make the schema into the database and also we have to create the table into the database so let me uh, first let me first create the schema right so let me create the schema Let me run create schema so my schema is ready let me set it as default and I have to run a query to create the table right after creation of the schema as I said that you have to manually create the table into the schema so what you can do is you can simply uh, run the query to create the table into the schema so let me run this query so let me refresh it so we have the table right so we have the users table right so now uh, let's go we have the table right so what we can do is we can uh, simply start the application let me go on to the main class and let me run the application let me start the application so here you will be seeing that there will be no queries and uh, nothing would be printed uh, as we are not using the jpa we are using the my betas. so that is why a uh, very less blogging and all would be there right so our application has started let me go into the now we are on uh, postman let me post some data to the database so we are using slash users and our data is name and email right so name is john and email is john19 at gmail.com let me post this data so let me go to the database and let me see that if we have some data inserted into the database so yes we can see the id is one and john and email id is there so let me push some few more data right 
let me push uh, like Robin and let's say Robin 19 at the rate gmail dot com so let me push this data to let me check if this row is also exists so yes we have this data as well so now uh, we have the data now what we can do is we can go to the controller class and we can see that we need to fetch the data right so we have to put slash id right so if we are fetching the data with the id so let me put this id along with this and what we have to say one so i have to fetch the data of one right so it is a get call first of all let me change it to get call and let me say no data and let me fetch the data so we have the data of first id let me say that i want to fetch the data of second id so i'll get the second data of robin and if i don't put any id it will fetch all the data right so it will fetch all the data id1 and id2 data has been fetched right so we have the post we have tested the post we have tested the get let me update the data with the id right so let me go again into the raw and let me say i want to update it as robin singh and the email id remains the same and let me say the id as 2 right and i want to update it right so if you can see that we have the updation as put mapping so let me say put here right so let me push this data so it says ok the data is being fetched so let me now again fetch the data here we will also check it from the database that if it is uh, updated or not so let me get the complete data so it says robin singh and the email remains the same so let's go into the database as well and let's see that the data has been updated or not right so the name has been changed to robin singh right so now let's delete the data by using the id right so we have to put the id again and let me delete the data of two right and we have to select here as delete right and let me push this data so it says 200 okay now we won't be getting any data right of id2 so let me fetch it let me fetch all the data we have only id1 and let me refresh it here as well we only have the id1 so this was a CRUD application on my betis right so this is how you will be writing the queries and basically this uh, framework ORM framework is being used in the legacy systems wherein a lot of SQL management has been required very complex logics are, bit, are to be written in the SQLs there it has been used so it is a very useful framework and a good to know uh, framework for your uh, learning right so this was it from this video hope that you people like share comment on the video and if new to the channel please subscribe and press the bell icon hope to see you in the next video till then happy learning